So um, I'll try not to get too emotional when I talk about this perfume because um, it's one that I've gone back to because I've been really enjoying testing out my childhood perfumes or stuff that I liked when I was genuinely maybe around 10. Um, now, when you're 10 in the UK, back when I was 10 in the UK, so in the uh, very early 90s, um, everyone wore Coty, everyone wore Coty perfumes, Coty, Cote, I'm not sure how you say it, but exclamation, wild musk, um, probably loads of others that I can't remember, was Tribe from Coty? Um, I wish I could smell that one again, I think that was totally unlike anything I, I remember smelling before or after. Um, but I wore a body spray of Le Mans by Coty and I thought I was the bee's knees. I thought I was really mature and awesome. Um, and I wore it for a little while and I think maybe when I was quite young, one year, my grandmother asked my mum what she could get me for my birthday or for Christmas. I can't remember which occasion it was, but my mum told her that I liked this perfume this lovely beautiful little bottle and she then for many many years afterwards every celebration would get me a little scented soap and perfume or body spray and moisturizer or you know all there was often a soap involved um of lemon um <sighs> um and so I just, I, I got the urge to re-smell this, partly because I've been smelling the old perfumes, partly because I'm more aware of some of the history of this now. And I will definitely put a link to a, a gentleman's video where he talked about this perfume. And it was so interesting. And the history of it really was very exciting to me. Um, but mainly just because during the pandemic, I lost my grandma, we all did. Um, and I, I didn't get to see her because we weren't allowed to visit I didn't get to go to her funeral and so it's quite an emotional situation to think about how she bought this for me up until you know it makes me feel cruel but <laughs> up until I had to get my mum to tell her I didn't wear it anymore and I'd moved on because I did move on to much lighter perfumes and this is for me this is beast mode so this is the first in a few videos I'll do of a fuss pots you know beast mode perfume so an evening perfume now i i don't i've never knowingly smelt chanel number no. five i've never gone out of my way to smell it i've probably smelt it on people and not realized what it was but this i believe is by if i'm remembering correctly from that lovely man's video this is from the same perfume designer um the same nose i think people say that made chanel number no. five um, I think he has made many classic perfumes, but this one in particular is pretty much the recipe for Chanel number no. five with a few tweaks, um, which is why you'll see the top comparison for this on Fragrantica is Chanel number no. five. So I was like, I was quite intrigued by this. I was like, was I wearing a dupe for Chanel number no. five when I was 10? I mean, that's wild. But so I'm going to, I'm going to spray it. It's. I wondered if it would be too strong. I'm not, and I'm not sure. Oh, holy hell! That is just like a like stepping in a time machine. So I'm not sure if I'm just chill with how strong this perfume is, and how classic it smells because I did used to wear it, or because it's just so good and it's actually like strong, but it's not crazy strong. I mean, firstly. The bottle, isn't it so beautiful? This Art Deco bottle is, is just gorgeous. It's gorgeous. I love it. Um, I love, uh, give me Art Nouveau, give me Art Deco till cows come home. My favourite kind of shapes, but ang the more angular, oh my God, I love it. It's so wonderful. I think it's a bit of a shame they haven't upgraded the Fragrant, uh, upgraded, updated, <laughs> that's the word I'm looking for, the, the Fragrantica um, page so you can see this new bottle. Um, but because it is so historic, I mean, I think, I think it's actually from the twenties or thirties. So I imagine, you know, it, it's very accurate that it should have this kind of look to it. Anyway, <laughs> I mean, it smells like a vintage perfume in that you get that it's powdery, very, very powdery. 
it's very sweet it's really strong um but it's so nice it's so nice um so i'll read you the notes starts with aldehydes yes it very much starts with aldehydes they are like ooh, right in your face immediately slight hairspray vibe but quite a classic sweet hairspray um neroli peach and bergamot are the other top notes the middle notes are ylang ylang rose jasmine geranium and orchid Oof. ready for the base notes there's a lot of them so musk sandalwood vanilla doesn't say vanilla it says vanilla which is interesting tonka bean vetiver and virginia cedar and it's very heady it's I, I would not wear this during the daytime myself this is an evening perfume this is an evening perfume that's bright and fun and it's very sweet again it has a bit of baby powder smell about it um it's very floral but it's really sweet it is woody but thank like thankfully i think it's more sandal woody than anything else um I, I don't uh, I don't particularly like cedar, but I really like sandalwood and I think that's what I'm getting the biggest vibe from. Um, there's quite a few florals, so I don't entirely know. <laughs> I wouldn't really be able to pick one out above the others. The peach and the bergamot, I think, are just like bringing everything together really nicely, giving it a slight tang. But it's very vintage smelling. If this is um in any way what Chanel number no. five likes, I think I'd like Chanel number no. five, but I don't really need to make that comparison or try it because it's so Chanel perfumes are apps that they're insanely expensive and I mean that they're, they're they're too expensive, they're a bit silly, I think. I think they're way overpriced. Um but this lasts really quite well. I mean, I can't imagine it lasts as long as something like Chanel number no. five, but I definitely got maybe five hours out of this one before I would have wanted to top it up and oh, it just it really it makes me feel glamorous it makes me feel so glamorous it makes me feel like I'm out and about you know in the 20s in my nice little show me ankles dress being a glamorous free-spirited woman that's what it makes me feel like it I feel I do feel actually quite sexy in this one, but I think stronger perfumes that have a bit of musk going on I tend to make me feel like that. And I think, I've not seen anyone else say this, so I don't know if it's my imagination or I'm just totally insane. It gives me a vibe of Joe Van Musk for women, the original amber coloured one. Um, it's probably also why I like this perfume a lot and in hindsight why when I first smelled Joe Van Musk I was so in love with it because probably there's a part of my little childhood brain that likes that smell um but this one it's maybe not so obvious at first but once you've been wearing it for about three hours I think that it really starts to smell on my skin like Joe Van Musk and I love Joe Van Musk again I will I promise I'll do a video but I've got so many bottles of it I'll get it all together and I'll I'll talk about it but I think I think this is absolutely delicious and I think because my only other real kind of proper evening perfume is Poison by Dior and that is £100 bottle this was £5 <laughs> which again is mad I could um I can't actually remember where I got this um but it's pretty much cheap everywhere like this is so cheap Cote perfumes obviously they're just they're just cheap but the quality is not cheap I'm amazed by this perfume. I'm amazed that I wore this smell when I was 10 because realistically, back in the early 90s, this was probably even stronger because I, I do find that vintage perfumes, they, they don't normally retain exactly the same recipe. Um, there's normally like a formula that's not quite as hardcore. Um, but yeah, this is, this is pretty magical and it I know it will make me think of my grandmother every time I wear it, which makes it even more special. Um, I'm kind of tempted, even though I do wonder if one of the reasons I stopped wearing the really heady perfumes when I was little, um, is because my mum doesn't like strong perfumes. Um, and while I was living with her, probably I, I just sort of naturally started wearing more skin scenty type things, but I am kind of tempted to just wear this when I go and visit them next week and, um, and just see if she remembers it. <laughs> 
that might just make her feel a bit sick so maybe I shouldn't do that because she's very sensitive to scents but um I'm only half sensitive when I like something that's strong I can wear it and I can wear this because it's very sweet but it's not it's not sweet in a syrupy vanilla way it's sweet in the way that that class the classic musky perfumes are it's sweet in the way that the Jovan and Alyssa Ashley musks are sweet in that it's sugary sweet um it's it's quite magical and, and I think if you want to smell like money as people say but you don't want to spend money I think this might be a really good uh blind buy if you like I mean if you like Chanel number no. five this is a safe blind buy <laughs> because it everyone thinks that this smells like it and again I will put the link down to the information about the the nose behind it because it seems like it's actually literally the same recipe with a couple of adjustments so it is Chanel number no. five it's like Chanel number no. five sister little sister um and apparently Chanel number no. five is more woody um and so I'm glad that I've got this instead of Chanel because uh, the more woody it is, the less I'm going to like it generally. So yeah, I've just, what a beautiful bottle for a beautiful smell and beautiful memories. I just, um, just, I, I was slightly overwhelmed by it all really, but I'm so glad to have this again. Really, really happy.